the infernal shrines. Almost Gaia. We don't see that very often. I would love to see that. Mm -hmm. So, RPG with the first pick, as this was the KT map choice. What are we going to see? Infernal Shrines, Wave Clear, and Solar Laners are very popular. Globals are, within reason, pretty acceptable as well. Mm -hmm. Very true. Garage basically taken out of the equation immediately here. Can't really blame them. I'm actually very happy with teams starting to uh, respect the power of Gear Rush, even when you're first pick, even when you could potentially pick it yourselves. Um, if you do not have that battle plan coming into a draft, you know, you better not risk it giving over to the enemy team. With the Hanzo removed as well. These are, very, so far this is very standard. There is, we have a sort of set pool of like, eight heroes that we sometimes choose from from the bands like yep. four main and then like another four uh slightly out there ones all right so what are we going to see here now rpg of course they are trying to make timeless shine right timeless is a player we perhaps need to talk about a little bit as well uh we mentioned it yesterday as well there seems to be a little bit of a grudge going on uh in the ranks of rpg with some players not really happy about Timeless's performance Oftentimes, uh, you know, accusing him of playing too aggressively, which to a certain extent we agree as well. But we still can't deny the fact that he's probably one of the strongest players in the team from a mechanical point of view. So sometimes him trying to make those plays in order to get his team ahead is something that can work, but it can also backfire. Against a team like KT, I think it has more likely of a chance to actually work out. Whereas against teams they faced in the past, like SPT yesterday, it just didn't work out. But Terio coming in first, a little bit out of the ordinary for RPG. Usually we would see them focus on the Timeless Hero, giving that Grey main very quickly. This seems to be a go-to for him. But Terio coming out first here. In this case, this is likely going to be for uh, Force uh, C or maybe even Sar. Yeah. Definitely true. I really wouldn't love to see um, Timeless over Terio. Like whenever he's played or he's forced onto that secondary tank it oftentimes seems to me that he can't unfold his true potential and uh, surprisingly yeah. enough by the way when he played this uh, one illidan game in phase one it was probably one of the best games they ever had as rpg and we have yet to see the magic that is timeless this illidan of course so maybe sooner or later we're gonna see it if not here then when else right kt is definitely one of those teams that rpg needs to see as a target to tackle and uh, maybe take down a 2-0 Rayman, take it away. That's already a uh, little bit of a blow here for Timeless. He was feeling very confident on that hero as of late. Indeed. He's, his, his hero pool is varied if you include time flow. Since he's moved to RPG, Timeless has been a little bit more boxed in terms of his hero picks. He still has a reasonable variety, but I'm sure he would prefer it to be more. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it's not because of Timeless uh, not having a strong hero pool. It's more like, is his team actually going to allow him to play the heroes he wants to play? Like, is he uh, going to be able to play a full quest stall? Is he going to be able to play that Illidan? Like, those are all the questions. But Falset coming into the mix here already. And while Falset isn't really part of the Western meta, in Asia, Korea, China, and Taiwan, we see him a lot, actually, uh, to very good success as well. It's not like Falset is a hero that it's just an artifact of the past, right? Where people are like, hmm, maybe we can still make it work. No, in Asia, it actually wor still works. And uh, I can't wait to see that maybe at the mid-season Brawl Tetra, a couple of weeks from now, or a couple of months from now, mm -hmm. uh, we're going to see the styles collide, right? We're going to have Asian meta facing a European and uh, North American meta. And heroes like uh, False that could maybe make a difference or not. It seems to be the case. Falstad, Terriel, Zeratul, all heroes that seem to, Medivh as well, jump up when it comes to an international stage, a reasonable yeah. amount. So I wouldn't be surprised to see them pop up, even though most of them are pretty popular at the moment. As with Falstad on the board, I would suspect that would be a chicken pick, but I have been proved wrong before. That could be for Timeless. I mean, I'm, I think I've got up the list of Timeless's heroes this season, and it's pretty low. Uh, Greymane, Leoric, Sonya, Genji. That sounds about right. Mm -hmm. In phase one, of course, he was uh, Time Flow's tank player oftentimes. Actually being one of the four uh, first people, one of the spearheads when it comes to uh, playing Garage extensively and having an impact on the region. Yeah. So he was one of the first. Actually, it was the first game we cast in 2018 when he busted out what? the uh, Garage. 
Indeed, and if we count his time on time flow and all of the phases before that, his list becomes extremely more extensive with heroes like Stitches and Kerrigan and Ragnaros and Dahaka and Asmodan. His <laughs> list becomes a lot more interesting, but it seems RPG are attempting to curb him in a bit. Yeah, and rightfully so, because although he obviously had a lot of success in the open division with his exotic picks, I mean, HC China is just a little bit of a different beast. So you're not going to get away with uh, too, too many crazy, extraordinary things. For now, though, we see Leoric and Diablo come in for KT. And this is, once again, Kaitu very likely to be on that Diablo. And if you watched this yesterday, guys, which I hope you did, then uh, you saw what Kaipu was capable of doing, actually giving us a touch of breeze from Europe there at the Western Clash, where he single-handedly demolished people on Towers of Doom over and over again. And Infernal Shrines is actually a really good map for Diablo as well. You have a lot of walls near the shrine areas where you can slam people into. You know, the mercenary camps, there's a couple of uh, choke points as well. So definitely a really strong pick, and I like it. Agreed. And I mean, I was looking at Timeless's uh, previous picks, and the one that stood out to me in the draft they were against when it was just Greymane and Malfurion, and with the bands that were in, I was leaning towards Genji. Diablo is one of the better tanks against Genji. That has Very suddenly true. made a little bit more concerns. So now we're leaning towards perhaps a Tychus, or even a Malphael if he wants to stick for that melee style. Yeah, there's definitely gonna have to be a little bit of shredding, tank shredding, and they go for Both? Oh, <laughs> I'll take it. I will take go. that. <laughs> no, I'll totally take it. The only thing I'm a little bit... Oh, and immediately the reaction coming in here. They didn't even falter a single second. The Medivh, as the ultimate respond to exactly that Tetra, to the minigun, to the shredding, and maybe even the last hope. Uh, sorry, the last right, <laughs> which could be the last hope for Malthale. <laughs> Um, there is so much shutdown potential right now from Deef that it's going to be very scary, although they have percentage damage for RPG uh, to face this combo. It's lots of percentage damage over time that Medivh's going to have mm -hmm. slight issues with. Arcane Explosion, though, is probably going to land every single time, and the question is, without Cleanse being available, is Stukov enough to stop his team just getting blown up by the Portal Diablo? Hmm. And not just that, not just the portals, but also by the Leyland Seal Apocalypse. Like, that is yes. super scary. And I think a lot of uh, a lot of responsibilities now lie on the shoulders of Teriel and uh, Stukov. I think those two heroes really could make all the difference. Maybe going for a Flailing Swipe Sanctification, so you drop the enemies away, you push them back, and then save everyone. Or maybe we go for a Massive Shove to basically punch someone out of the portal when they come uh, in through it. Or maybe just keep the Diablo at bay in general. So this is so cool. We see a really uh, interesting style by both teams, right? On the one hand, we have RPG with a very backline heavy draft, you know, with uh, the only frontline being Teriel. And then Stukov, of course, next to it. And then we have full-on aggression with Diablo, Leoric, Medivh to support it. And uh, it's always tricky to see a Medivh because although we're playing in pro play, the execution is sometimes tricky to make work. This is our for a case with Medivh in general, but ladies and gentlemen, we are loading in to the Infernal Shrines and spawning. On the left-hand side is RPG with Chicken on Tychus, MJ on Stukov, Saar on Falstad, C on Tyrael, and Timeless is on Malthiel. That's a lot of tank shredding. Giant Can it work against what KT has brought to the battlefield here with Hope on the Grey Man, Kaitu on the Diablo, TWT plays the Malfurion, Lycia is on that Medivh, and Zizim on Leoric this time around. So Lycia, the team's off laner, the team's melee flanks, switching it over, switching it up to the Medivh. And I like this decision because I think from a mechanical point of view, from how good each player is individually, Lycia is probably the best thing I've got. Lycia is very strong as an individual player and with the team here. As we see though, Sism take a little bit of damage, having to back up a bit here. CWT just spamming at the heels. Ooh, okay. Good move on to Chicken here, but Chicken tank it through and now it is scary. Main is dead in danger, but Force of Will keeps him alive. Good trades for both teams, neither one able to finish the job. Yeah, that was quite the moment here for Chicken already falling victim to the engage of Kaitu. While he did survive, I'm not sure if that was planned actually. Look at those shields by C <laughs> keeping him alive. The Stukov's heels are oh, real. Beautiful. 
chicken is just living on the edge right now. <laughs> so is Kaiju. Did you see where he was standing yeah. there? Yeah. Right in the corner. Like, if I step forward, I'm in range for their auto attacks. They don't have to come into tower range. I could just be hit by a Tiger's grenade and they will die. So we stood there, trusted his teammate, waited for Medivh, and Medivh saved the day. Medivh saved the day. And now we see a rotation game coming in here. Both teams trying to rotate between mid and bottom, clearing the minion waves as fast as they can. Uh, a little bit of, a, of an advantage, of course, going over to RPG because Medivh, as good as he is, his wave clear is a little lackluster, and especially in the early game where his Arcane Rift should normally be used against minion waves alone because otherwise it'll go on a uh, relatively long cooldown. You need to always make sure to have at least one enemy hero in its uh, projectile. But uh, KT are holding on. They're holding strong. In the top lane in the meanwhile, I think this is probably going to be a duel that Malthael should win. Lyric is a strong soul laner, but... His self-sustain cannot match the damage over, the damage over time that Malvin should inflict onto him. As we see, Zizm just, just clearing out the lanes as much as possible. Rotating from top, actually leaving Malthael alone for a little bit, which is fair. Malthael has a pretty decent lane against him. Immediate uh, trade use here. For Stukov to keep Falstead in the lane. Mortals are okay, you know, at least Diablo was uh, trying to step through immediately. So he could maybe apply a little bit of pressure there. And the immediate response from RPG as well. Just falling back a little bit. Realizing, you know what? We don't want to risk anything in the early game. And we see the increased vision. Now at level 4 for the mid -E. Which is nice. The dust of appearance. Although kind of strange we're not going with the Raven Familiar. As that seems mm. to have leapt up in popularity recently. So or going timeless. with a utility vision. <laughs> dead. Timeless, you oh my. Okay, secured the mercenary camp at least. But all he needed today to do was just play it a little safer. Can they get Zizim at least? They get a kill. Okay, worth it up to this point. Trade value onto Hope. He needs to retreat. Yeah, Hope barely survives Kaitu going down, but a lovely route by TWT, and that keeps him alive, and he backs out. So in the end, an okay outcome for RPG, but of course that death on Malfield could have definitely been prevented. But sometimes you're in that spot where you're like, do it all i need to do is just land this ability and then heal up right and dodge the drain hope but he couldn't do that and essentially Lyric had a giggle even in death Lyric has re uh, is clearing as much as he can there's still a mercenary camp in top lane so he might actually be forced to re-rotate up there and this may involve kt giving up the objective they do have an xp advantage right now so mm. they might want to try but yeah. they're a bit far away from level seven so if they want to try they're gonna have to fight on even footing and looks like they do intend to give this up oh. unless they can get a pick off because the orc has gone back to top yeah leisha though stealing actually a significant amount of the skeletons with an arcane rift over and over as long as he gets that on a hero the cooldown is going to be reduced tremendously and now we see saw under pressure managed to survive right now and all five members of rpg have assembled they have to move up here, and I think at this point, KT realized, you know what, we're just going to let Leoric clear with that top mercenary camp, which is the camp that was just taken earlier. So in the end, I think it was worth it on the grand scheme of things. But level 7, thanks to Leoric's efforts, thanks to him double-soaking mid and top, is here earlier for KT. So this pushing uh, potential here will be quite limited for RPG. Yeah, they're trying to Can move in, the but the route's down, the Punisher's pulled over, Damn. the portal is dropped as we see the different turnaround, but nice little bait by C, able to easily move out of the way and speed boost Chicken to Freedom. Yeah, beautiful smite there, the swift retribution is here, so the movement speed will be amplified even more. Of course, also now granting targets attack speed, which is something we've seen multiple times now with Tychus and Teriel in the same team. You pop the Odin, you drop the swift retribution underneath, and that Odin is going to go on rapid fire mode. Yeah, you can spam out those shells and get all that damage in. And we see for now, though, Hope taking the mercenary camp. C once again looking to interrupt this RPG, playing very bravely. They're on even talents. They're happy to do so. As the flip onto Timeless, who gets rooted down, but still able to teleport just off. Thanks to the good zoning silence by Stukov, giving C and Timeless a little bit more freedom. Portals down. Kaiju looking to try and tackle towards his team. Decides against ah. it because Tigers just tracked down the Greymane and picked up the kill. Kaiju dropped low as well. Great move yes. in by Sar as well. Pick it up a second kill. Strong shielding there by C on the Terrial as well. I really love C's performance today. Oftentimes when he was playing heroes like Terry, uh, sorry, like ETC or Diablo himself on Ubrek, he was oftentimes going for very greedy, hyper-aggressive plays. But on Terrial here, he seems to be much more focused on keeping his allies alive, which is I really like to see here. So great team fighting all across the board. The Diablo actually Kaitu a little bit too occupied with keeping the enemy teams at bay. 
uh, the enemy team members at bay rather than peeling for the back line. So as such, with that bottom four taken down, RPG for the first time in this game takes a clear lead in experience. And they're actually approaching level 10 as well. The problem is there's not going to be much for them to do there. There's the siege giant, there's the uh, Kazara camp. Mm -hmm. but that's about it. Unless they want to try and make a play onto the opponent's Fallen Shaman, they're not really going to be able to get the game-turning advantage that they want. They're just going to have a slight lead for a while, and that's going to be a bit of a shame. They might even just try to force a fight to see if they can do something, but yeah. KT, I was about to say they don't look like they want to join in on that, but they do try to pick off Timeless to see if they can remove that level 10 advantage for a while, but they're not able to do so. So now they pull back to their gate, avoid fighting before they have their own level 10, which is still pretty close considering. It's really cool to see how this high, this super hard focus on the backline here in the Draft 4 RPG is working out quite flawlessly up to this point because it's really hard for Diablo to catch someone that is not in melee range, right? Whenever he goes for a target in the back lane, at the same time, he's going to expose himself quite tremendously because the Shadow Charge is covering such a long distance, whereas with a melee target, with more melee targets, let's say, an offlaner or a melee assassin, he could oftentimes go for an engage without exposing himself to too much of that. He's going for Tyrael, that is the only target in melee distance that he could go for, Material, of course, is hard to kill with the shields, with the healing from Stukov as well. And once again, RPG is able to retaliate quite handsomely. They are looking pretty good, putting the pressure on, and they silence this from Stukov. MJ, turning it up. I haven't had a huge amount to say about him since he joined the team, but this game, he's looking good. We'll see if he can continue it. Yeah, I really like what RPG has done in this draft altogether, like implementing the Stukov a hero that they haven't really played that much in the past, but MJ definitely stepping it up here, and it looks like China has really found a way to make Stukov work, because that was a support when, um, after the Rustic Clash and Zealous performance, chats in uh, particular. Other teams were hopping on the bandwagon, especially Korean teams picking Stukov uh, a lot more frequently. China still refused to play and still, you know, prioritizing Uther and Rhaegar and especially Malakrim a little more. But now that so many supports in China have learned how to play him, Stukov looks like a different hero to me. So keeping the pressure onto Kaidu is looking for an opportunity. There's the Apocalypse, and a beautiful massive shove completely denied the Apocalypse value as Kaidu was looking to try and combo. Oh, Gas is used for the disengage as well because Zizim has already separated himself from the team. He is the target here, but Kaidu moves back in, but he's used most of his combo already. He's not able to get into position. Zizim stays alive, despite being isolated. Nice isolation there onto C, trying to focus him down as Kaidu looks pretty good, but he's dropping low from the Tiger's minigun value as C chases him down too. And once again, the damage numbers aren't really high enough for him to pick up a kill. More. And the positioning, Leyline Seal, they're just going to try and grab it while everyone is dead here. Looking for C, they're not able to, for Sasa, they're not able to get him. Punisher goes over to RPG, Kaidu is dropped low, Zizim is dropped low, Portal is dropped, and Zizim will fall. The portal was so close, but Liora completely uh, caught off guard here, walk, walking towards the other direction, the opposite direction, unfortunately. And now RPG is in full command. The top lane being pressured by the Fallen Shaman camp. Really sweet timing there. And I love to see his patience in this team fight, saving the uh, sanctification during the entire team fight, not getting triggered, not getting baited too early. And as such, Licia, despite providing so much additional protection, and despite the fact that they had a four man Leyland seal, it was not enough. False that survived. Diablo really wanted to nail him down to no success, though. False that too elusive. And as such, RPG now. Carrying all that momentum, a two-level lead. That is quite unusual if you take a look at RPG's recent history, where they were usually the team that fell behind in the early mid-game. But that right now, they are looking very good. And these are some cool fights. Very oh, slow, yeah. very back and forth. Everyone is trying to burn everything. It takes about a minute to kill a single person. It's pretty cool to see. I'm enjoying this. I'm very much digging the... Uh reinvention of uh, RPG, really trying to adapt and improve for day after day. And this could be very well the first series for them to take, the first two of victory, mind you, in that second phase, and it would help them so much to improve their overall standings in the league. A chicken burns down the minion wave. Arcane Rift, 36 out Almost of 40, only needs to hit four more. Uh, I don't know if you saw the Open Division game yesterday, no, where someone got to, uh, someone picked Bedeev and died repeatedly while oh, no. trying to get the stacks and then got within like eight by the end of the game where his team won but he nearly got the stacks but he died i think four times total so his uh, team won without him uh, completing it yeah, yeah basically because purpose, he was just plan. pressured so much <laughs> all right in the same game uther died 10 times it was an interesting game very lo lots of deaths Sometimes. as we see cleaning up the minions 
you know, sometimes it is good to die as an Uther, but you shouldn't open to it. Double digits is never a goal to aim for in the death category. <laughs> Dike, uh, sorry, uh, Diablo trying to find the target of Saar, but not hitting into the walls, so yep. therefore Saar not stunned and able to roll back away. Hope chooses to chase that by himself, but not able to drop enough burst damage. You can see the Arcane Rift now completed, but they're trying to kill Chicken. Beautiful massive shove interrupts the domination, the dominance. And as such, Chicken able to back up Saar, also able to survive, and the tanks holding the front line. The tank, I guess, and Malthael, but Malthael finally killed off by Kaitu, who finds a wall and smashes Timeless into it. Yeah, now... RPG, they're going to have to be extremely cautious. The supporting, the healing, their shielding is just so strong for KT. Although they had a couple of, uh, you know, mistakes in the team. But for example, the Apocalypse not hitting after the Leyline Seal. For example, the Falstead engage that didn't really work out too, too well. They were still able to overpower their opponents sim simply by uh, focusing down the mouth when it really mattered. Here goes the portal. Here goes the invade. Are they going to be successful this time? Looking for C, but once again, Sars positioned himself very aggressive. So much damage done onto TWT, but thanks to the just vision that was just given on him, Tychus for, uh, Diablo finds him. Is in range with that extra from the shadows range that he has on his shadow charge. Mm -hmm. Is easily able to tackle uh, Falstead here because this is a bad place to fight a Diablo because there's walls literally everywhere. Yeah, that of course means that Arcane Rift, the Master's Touch, has been completed for uh, for Medivh, which means more damage. And uh, there's overall way more team fighting power. The move goes through, but the shield is real. The protection works ever so well. Now, Chicken needs to be extremely careful. Chicken actually going in aggressively, gets immediately engaged wow. on by the Diablo. Massive shove. The way, what we actually saw there was Saar, sorry, C, drop a holy ground behind Diablo so that when he tried to overpower Chicken into the rest of his team, the Holy Ground stopped Chicken going too far and stopped the rest of KT getting to Chicken. Really clutch move by C, but they're looking again. This time they get Chicken into the Apocalypse. Master Black King doing huge amounts of damage to him, trying to finish him off as is a drain, but Sanctification denies all the value. Leyline Sealed though, completely negates anything extra from the Sanctification as the Auric barely survives, finally finished off, and the objective taken by KT. They're trying to grab another kill as well. Tyrael being a distraction. Hope, looking for time just gets it with the go for the throat and C will fall as well. Two kills to one going over to KT and they get the Punisher. They get the Punisher and it's a purple one and look at the gap closing capabilities of Medivh dropping a portal. That is all she wrote for the Birdman Chicken though. He gets the safety. All the cooldowns were used on false set, but that is just spot on decision making here by KT. All of a sudden they're back in the game, baby. Dropping one portal after the other. Those Leyline Seals as well, Tetcher, in their previous engagement, where they basically shut down all the value from the Sanctification. That was one big move by Licia, and that is why we highlighted the player so much. He's one of the most seasoned veterans in the league, really carrying his team on his back right now. They're looking for Chicken once again. This time he has no one here to save him except Sukov, but Licia with the damage from that fully stacked Arcade Rift, able to pick up the kill. All right, it is a back and forth. Probably the most even series or game we had all day long. Timeless Engage uses the Torment of Souls, heals up quite tremendously, jukes the Greyman as well. That is a good comeback. Already Medivh is gone. With Medivh gone, TWT is the target. Tiro drops low, but holy grass. Falstad fights potentially a bit too far, actually. Not I think he's meant for a tree ball, but instead they're turning it around. Gusts the rest of the enemies away from him so that he can try and focus on TWT. Barrel rolls away, but you can see Hope with huge pressure picks up the kill. Where is the damage dealers? Where is any of the damage coming from? With Tyrael and MJ, the only two alive, Massive Shove is used. Tyrael is so separated. It's a three, uh, sorry, a four versus two, but finally Tychus is back alive. Odin will be available soon. It's already available, in fact. That could be what they need to defend. Petra, how could RPG lose that fight? It looked so good for them. They disabled Medivh as the first target. That is the best case scenario, but then they split all over the place. Tyrael couldn't shield anymore. Tyrael couldn't use sanctification. Falstead flew behind the enemy lines way too far, actually. Not able to help Mal uh, Malthael in need. They actually whiffed their abilities completely because of that gust. Malthael couldn't heal anymore, and things just turned sour from there. I think RPG just stumbled. They, they tripped uh, uh, over their own legs there. I would agree. They had a, It was not the best move by Falstead, especially. I think that was a... Uh totally out ambitious and massively misreading the scenario in general. The numbers was pretty even, especially that Leoric revived just in time to be able to join that and turn it a little bit back in favor yeah. of KT again. But overall, the most important thing that RPG did was exactly what they intended to do, and that was they saved their core. 
because this is going to allow them to soak to 20, it's gonna, uh, or at least soak to 18 before the next objective spawns. But they're no longer in a we are going to lose instantly scenario. Chicken once gets vice packs to holy ground by yeah. C. C has been on point with these today. Yeah, the Holy Ground actually messing with uh, the location of the Diablo. He can Shadow Charge all the way, and the combo was already used. So he, instead of, uh, I think it was false at this time, he got the Territorial, and he can one-shot the Territorial like that. In fact, Territorial didn't even bother, didn't even care to do much. Now they're trying to go for a sneaky surround. The Eldrins might they just scout. scout. The one bush, no one's in. Yeah, it's um. the wrong one. <laughs> Hopefully C I'll is see. going to smell them, I'll but... See. Yeah. Uh, Midif, Midif is acting a little strange here, isn't he? Oh no, he doesn't know! Dun, dun. He doesn't know! He doesn't know! Down he goes, there's the there's the silence. Material explodes onto a force of will, gets nothing. Timeless is completely alone here. Finally makes his way back to his team. There are still a four hit. This is not a terrible place to fight. Yeah. Hope, look at it, just try and blow up Timeless here. Oh. But Diablo has just dived this. Who's taking the core shots? It doesn't appear to matter. Oh, it's the Trent! The tree is taking the core shots! The four shots, sorry, they move on and pick up yet another kill. Three kills to KT. Yeah, and even with the four dealing quite a lot of damage onto the red team members, they still have Medivh, they still have Tranquility. Tranquility actually dealing with the Tormented Souls. They're healing more than it can actually put damage on. And now we see the fling. The level 20 is real. We see MJ falling. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is game number one. Only Tyke is left alive. Chicken isn't even trying anymore. That was quite the spectacle here. Such a turn of events. Just don't really see that that often in a game of this uh, quality. So KT turning things around against RPG after they were behind for so long taking game number one in Infernal Shrines, and we've got a series in our hands here. This is already shaping up like quite the spectacle here. I like it.